it is in fact Tuesday. Um, back, well, I was back a while back actually. I was back Sunday, technically, uh, from the short little break we had. Um, before we get into opening the game and before we get into the recap, let me show. We'll do a little show and tell. So as I'd been saying, uh, part of why I was off, part of why we didn't get a Higurashi stream on Saturday, most importantly for this, um, I was out at a convention. No, not the bigger convention that happens Labor Day weekend, or, you know, Labor Labor Day weekend? Yeah, that's right, say it. Labor Day weekend. Uh, not that one. Not PAX West. No. But the smaller regional one here near me san japan now uh what's gonna be the easiest way of showing this i'll just show the secondary screen um and i had a grand old time a grand old time was had uh it was nice hanging out with friends um doing things buying things seeing things participating in things that's the best way of explaining how what you do at a convention. You do things, you participate, and you see things. Occasionally, you buy things. Um, but something that, oh, that wasn't planned, uh, me and some friends were just walking around the floor, uh, went to certain areas. Uh, there was um, a little area in the giant, more big game room, room section area calling it game room seems a little weird but it was like a area um there was like a pachinko a pachinko uh section set up by some company and we were looking around at the different ones i was like oh i really want to try one of these like you know i haven't i haven't touched a pachinko machine or anything prior and we're looking at they had like a lot of different options to try and you'd basically buy some balls and then you you know pachinko little metal balls um and then you could just go go ham and uh no joke as we're scanning through lo and behold we run into the higarashi uh pachinko machine so i have <laughs> i have some still photos, obviously. Uh, oh, that looks great. <laughs> um, here we go. This will actually work. This actually works. Um, so this is... Uh, I have some still photos, and then I have some videos to show of it as well. Um, this is... So I ended up trying it. You'll see here in a sec. Uh, the Higurashi... Let me zoom in quite a bit here. Um, Pachinko machine. Here it is all lit up blue. There you go. You got the thing. Um, and like I said, it was my first time actually handling a pachinko machine. I had the lady, some lady show me how to work it and all. So basically, okay, for the uninitiative, um, let me show. So you have like balls here. Here's where you're pressing buttons and stuff and you're doing things. The ball's kind of sitting here. You hit feed like this little button here. And then it goes, sucks into the machine. And you're essentially, you watch the balls go up here. And basically, you have a dial. I don't know if it's on this shot. Is this it? I don't know. It's kind of dark. It's kind of lit weird. But you have a dial that you're essentially... You keep rotated, and you can adjust the speed and velocity of which you are releasing a ball. This is like, not only show and tell. This is I'm teaching you how to pachinko, because I just learned as well. And I, I think a lot of people know of pachinko machines, but don't know like what you would actually do if you were to sit in front of them. So that's why the lady ended up showing me. So you have a dial, it's like a crank almost, that you set to one thing. And you can make little rotations to it, but basically you're controlling this, as far as I understand, the speed and velocity of how the balls go sucked up. Because what you want to do then is it comes up here, and then you want it to drop in this area. If it goes past here, I think you just lose the balls, I think. I think they go down here, and it just goes into like a gutter kind of like thing. So you want it to go in here... And then it goes down here, and it's just random chance. I mean, obviously, every pachinko machine's kind of middle thing is going to look different. But it'll just rotate. It hits this little spinner thing randomly. It'll kind of, like, jiggle around. And you basically... <laughs> what I learned is that a lot of balls 
basically are not going to do anything for you because what, as far as I understand, you just had to get the, you're trying to get it from here into here. This tiny, this little spot that's big enough just for like one ball. Um, I think there's some way to drop it into like this looking like thing and it kind of goes into this middle thing and then it kind of shoots right down straight through. So it's like an almost a guarantee. It's not guaranteed because I saw some come into this area and then just kind of drop off to the side. But like there's this more guaranteed like it just gets kind of like funneled into this thing. But most of the times you're going to do is hit the ball here and it kind of spins off and it goes doo -doo 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 over across these little bumpy things and you're trying to just get it here. But most of your balls are going to go in here. If you the dial shooting too far, it'll go over here and go and it's done. And then you got the middle thing. So I took this first picture. <laughs> we got obviously Rika here, big old Rika head. There's this plastic like arena here on the side, which is great. It lit up and did things. Um, obviously, it says when they cry here. And I think I have a better video. You'll see it some second here. Um, there's these four figurines basically. So there's the big screen, then there's this screen, and then there's these four <laughs> figurines of the four club members, uh, Mion, obviously Rina, Rika, and, um, Satoko there. And they would light up and do different things. And obviously you got some lights here. It's all to attract your eyes. That's, I mean, just like slot machines, but so basically you get the ball in here. Uh, then the slots get activated you'll see slots and then you're basically just trying to match things now i was i didn't want to drop a ton of money i'd already spent a ton of money that day on actual uh art from people um some retro uh video games for my own personal collection and stuff uh so i didn't want to drop a ton of money on pachinko balls so i just it was like five dollars and you would just get i played for like I don't know, several minutes or so. Um, and I, like I said, I was really bad. But again, it's also kind of luck based. So it is what it is. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was cool to actually check and see because uh, last year when we did Umineko, I was like, damn, when I learned that there was like an Umineko like machine at that time, I was like, I really want an Umineko pachinko machine or whatever and that still is true to this day i i and i'm re basically renewing my pleas and my my wants and my wishes to the universe and i guess to anyone that might potentially hear this somehow it's a slim chance but on the off chance anyone has any tips or uh any information or by any chance runs into an opportunity for me, I would be willing to pay a, quite a premium, no joke, to get my hands on an Umineko or now Higurashi Pachinko machine. Just put that out there into the universe. And I'm not joking when I say that. I'd be, I'd be willing to... I know they're not cheap. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um, if you're unfamiliar with how much Pachinko machines would maybe cost, and then also these ones in particular now uh so yeah uh but here's the thing that was a dream last year a year from now from then look where we're at i actually got my hands on a higurashi one i didn't actually i mean i played it it, it was in front of me and i played it so i'm one step closer to realizing this goal and think of the content that <laughs> i hate using the word content but think of the content we could do on this channel if i got a hold of an umineko or higurashi pachinko machine i'm just saying it's it's an actual dream and i'm not joking when i say that um and and not only that i then spoke to because i was like because i was like well this has gotta i'm i'm close to the dream right so then i talked to the guy who was like run ran the company that was like basically takes these pachinko machines and takes them to i guess to conventions and you can like i got a business card or whatever and i was like hey i uh, i'm an idiot um and i i don't even know where i'd begin to try to look for these machines and i was like telling him i was like i really want like a numineko or higurashi one like i was like how do i find he's like there's all these things and he's like i i he was at first like trying to brush me off a bit seemingly and then i had to look him dead in the eyes and i was like no sir i'm actually serious like I just like I pitched here on the stream, I had to like tell him I was like, I'm, I would be willing to part with a lot of money 
I am that irresponsible and that determined that like I really want because I don't think it wasn't I wasn't gonna like be weird and ask him if I could just buy his machine outright because I don't think that's what this was if he gave me the opportunity to I would do it in a heartbeat I would lug the machine from that convention it would be on site he I would be like name your price sir name your price The couple of dollars I get from streaming would at least go towards this. And I'm just saying it would be such a fun everything, I think, if I got it. But again, it's a it's a pipe dream at this point, possibly. But again, I gotta put that out there just on the off chance. Now, um, so yeah, uh, but he gave me some leads to some things. So again, it's not completely shut out uh as a possibility, um, which is good. Um we I love to see that. Uh, we, we, we take, we take steps in our dreams here. Um, let me go, let me see what other, um, photos I have here. So this one, you can see it's all lit up green. So I explained it all. Now I can actually go through all these photos I have. Uh, so you can see they got the moon here. It's lit up differently on the sides. It's a more zoomed out photo. Uh, oh, here's the crank. Here's the crank you can see. I think I was going at here at the first time. Um, here's the actual crank so the, your hand is basically here this catches your balls i think if you like hit like a jackpot thing you get more balls you just kind of keep going there's a scoreboard at the top you'll see kind of thing that's showing like the jackpots or whatever you'll see that in a sec but this is the crank that might your hand is just like basically always on uh i guess technically here you can see the prices <laughs> so i did the five for five for 250 balls what does this even say? Ten, twenty dollars for fifteen hundred plus free prize. I should have probably tried to do that. I didn't know there were even prizes to. I probably should have. I probably should have looked into that a bit more. I don't know. What's the prize? Can the machine be my prize? <laughs> if I add <laughs> a couple zeros to this. Could I take the machine as a prize? Um, so yeah, that's lit up green. What's this one? This one also looks green, so it might be almost a very similar photo. I don't think it's actually showing a bit more. But you can see, oh, here we go. I zoomed out even more. So here's the something at the top with a bunch of numbers. I mean, uh, I don't know how to decipher any of this at the moment. She was telling me something, and I was like, I don't fucking know. Here's the slot though. You can see like the slots. So at this point I had gotten a ball in here and then the slots, it's basically like a slot game. It's just random chance. Images of all the different characters pop up. You can see, is this a two? It's kind of fuzzy, but uh, Tomatake looks like is a two or something. Uh, <laughs> Softico gets five. Irie, is that his name? Irie gets an eight. Um, it was a lot of fun there. What's this image? Oh, here we go. I think I took a clearer. Um, photo straight on especially at the slots there we go uh, rena getting number seven that's cool uh tomotake here on the left and is this uh takano on four look at them that's unfortunate uh something's happening here on the bottom screen uh, i don't know what that is but here's a little is this a is this a sleepy sleepy meon ep ep meon uh <laughs> Like I said, I was in I was in pure bliss. I was having so much fun, just spinning just spinning balls. I it was this my first time with a pachinko machine where I was like, hey, I get the addiction. I could imagine myself in a pachinko parlor just smoking seven packs an hour with a bunch of other people and just balls metal balls going everywhere. Like I that sounds like a great way to spend an afternoon, you know, and just losing all my money uh let me see this image what's this what did i get here oh it's all lit up dark and purple look at that oh there was some weird animation i don't think this was higurashi related but it was like inflating the ball i assume it was just something about inflation fetish or something but there's like uh, there's a lot of balls uh exploding and shit so i think takano here there in the middle little screen so that's cool uh daichi or Dai daich i don't know i don't know what that is and then I took, let me see, these two. These, This is not Higurashi. 
So I only noticed this after another series I love uh, a bunch, uh, Danganronpa. So there, I just took two in, or pictures of this one. It was literally right next to the left, but I didn't notice it until after I finished the Higurashi one. Uh, you can see Monokuma there. Um, yeah. Uh, so this one, I don't, I didn't play it. I don't know what was happening, obviously, but again, similar mechanism. You can see it goes up to the left or whatever comes down it's supposed to get there easy i would buy this too you know what i just want <laughs> honestly while umineko and higurashi machines would be the the best i would just like a pachinko a functioning pachinko machine uh of a series that i actually care about is this the same photo it's slightly different i think i took two of the same thing here so yeah there's that now uh, let me first show these. Now, I should have, um, okay, well, I've started it. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, I'm spoiling, spoiling, spoiling. Oh, here we go. I could do this. Okay, so here's the video. Here's one video I took. I disabled audio to protect, uh, people listen to double my voice. Uh, I think this is a shitty video, but you can just at least see it, like, going. Uh, this one, I think, is really quick, too. Oh, it's all blurry, too. That's a bad. Um, here, I think... There we go. I think I, uh, I think I got closer image of the little figurines there. I think they kind of went, like, up and down as you, like, did things. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think, like, there was at some point... It was all a blur, but... As balls are coming down and a lot of noises are happening, I think these, I think the little, the club girls kind of were going, moving. They were moving their body, I think. Now, here's the video. So, let me pause really quick. <laughs> this, obviously, video not taken by me. Um, Here's the lady. This is the lady instructing me how to go. So, I'm teaching. Here's me. Unfortunately, this is how I look. Um, again, I've muted it so you don't have to hear me or her protecting her voice, I guess. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but here I am, and I'm learning, my eyes wide open, trying to absorb as much information as I can about this machine. So she's teaching me, this is where what I was saying earlier is the balls come down, you know, you're trying to get them here, you're adjusting with the dial here. So I'll just kind of let this play. Um, <laughs> this is a friend of mine's taking this video. Um, and I'm just completely enthralled. I hear some balls are coming out. I don't even know. But, this, you know, I'm I'm in love at this point. I'm like, this machine, this could be, this, if I had this machine in my possession, I would lose days to just balls going down. Metal balls, trying to get them in the little slots. You know what I mean? Uh, how long is this? <laughs> oh, it's uh, it's three and a half more minutes. Perfect. I think I I think you know you'll start. Uh, we're not gonna watch this whole thing. I don't think. Um, but you can see the video. It, it's like, it's like I felt, you know, it's just like I was reading the visual novel here. I was, yeah, uh, you know, you got a screen. Things are happening. Oh, here we go. See a book start opening. I think at this point, uh, I'm not going to unmute this, but I kept asking my friend, I was like, are you, oh, here's me failing the slot thing, fucking up, getting not the slots, um, more balls coming down. I think I jokingly, I, but maybe annoyingly, I kept asking my friend, or I was like, every, every little time something happened, I was like, are you filming this? <laughs> Cause again, I was just having a fun time. Uh, just, um. I think, yeah, see, me looking back there, I look back, and I'm probably like, are you filming this? Or anytime something p popped on the screen. Um, I know vaguely, I remember last year looking at a lot of Umineko um, cutscenes that were in the Pachinko machines or whatever, and like, you know, there you can kind of get some kind of story, there's, there's some kind of continuation, there I'm hitting the button... There's the slots. Oh, the fucking Oishi. Two Oishis and one Rina. That's unfortunate. So close. Um, I don't think I ended up getting any slots matched up. 
So I think I didn't ever get to see um, like the machine like freak out, unfortunately. Um, a, a machine or two down, I had a different friend playing a different um, Pachinko machine. I think he was playing, I forget what series it was, but it was definitely a lewd Pachinko machine because it had like a fake pair of like titties up here like plastic that would like whenever things happened they would like move and jiggle up and down it was quite absurd um but honestly i respect it but yeah see i so i'm getting i'm i'm getting balls in there because every time you got a ball in the thing that's when the slots start oh you can see there you go see i spun the thing so the things in you can see the little girls the little figurines i was saying they go look at them going up and down boop, 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 as they light up and shit great we love it's like it's cool to see the whole mechanism working right it's a simple machine and simple actions but you know there's something i you know the people that are really into like pinball machines it's probably like the same thing you see like the 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 machine working and it's an interesting thing anytime you saw a ball go on this side you know that i fucked up uh because i gave too much force um Wow, we actually did almost watch the whole video. Uh, there, there I am. Up, oh, yep. I'm, I'm looking back. I'm like, basically, I'm like, are you proud of me? Uh, I was, un I was not succeeding like at all. I think here I said like I was out of balls. I was like I was done. There's my hands on the table. Like I, I finished. We're not getting anything else. It's over. It's over. It's Jover. Um. Again, maybe a long time spent talking about this, uh, just to basically say that um, I just really want a pachinko machine in my possession. But um, yeah, that's uh, it was fun. It was fun to actually get to play one. Now with the dream being that I was previously like, I really want, um, you know. I want those I want I want a machine in my possession so bad but I don't even know like it's like it's not like a thing it's not like a thing they mass produce you can't just even if it was like like they're obviously a lot of them are um uh like you know what I mean like it's not like something you can just like open a catalog a, ja a Japanese catalog and just be like I want this I could own some other random pachinko machine but it again, it, I'm not gonna get like a hold of a dumb pachinko machine, or I like guess some other series pachinko machine. It's got to be basically renewing my interest and my dreams of owning a Numineko or Higurashi um, pachinko machine. You know, that's uh, wanted to uh, put that out in the universe. But like I said, after making so many not jokes, but referencing it so much last year. And then now we're doing Higurashi. It was just very funny to be at this convention over the weekend and running into a Higurashi pachinko machine. So I'm at least glad that I was able to um, check that out just by happenstance. And that ends my show and tell. Um, I'll actually boot up the game now. <laughs> I've never had interest in a pachinko machine until now. Yeah, it's it's actually like like I said, I I only put a little bit of money into it, but if I could spend like a whole afternoon or something with one of the machines and actually like delve into like seeing all the different cuz what they they are is like if you were actually lucky or whatever the case is like not only is it the thrill of like a slot machine pinball machine kind of thing but also like you get to see little animated like cutscenes and everything and you know it's just it's a cool idea and obviously the machines you know are designed to try to attract you to play them forever and sink a ton of money or whatever but if i had my own hand if i had my own machine it wouldn't matter because i could just play it i would just have to buy it and they're expensive but I'm saying, like, I'm dead set. I'm so serious about getting one of them at some point. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I will kill someone if I have to. 
Uh, no, no, no. Um, I would do almost anything but kill someone to get a hold of one of those machines. I swear. Uh, like I said, at this point, Higurashi or Umineko probably at the top of the list. That Danganronpa one that I showed a picture of also would be kind of cool. But if I had to choose one at this point, I'm so committed to the bit of a Higurashi or Umineko pachinko machine that... But yeah, I don't even... It's like, I kind of know where to begin, but like it's like you have to hit up like yahoo japanese auctions try to find if they ever go up on sale it's just and then you got to imagine you got once you pay the price then you if you're like if it's in japan then you got to like pay like for freight freight shipping and you got to get it over to you and it's just gonna be and then and then the guy i spoke to was like yes yeah, so there's this here's this guy here's this web address that i'm not gonna share because i don't need more competition but he's like, yeah, if you go here, it's like this guy and he'll repair machines and he like, you know, refurbishes them a bit. Or you can try this website and they don't refurbish it, but then the, the machines are going to be a little cheaper because they're just whatever. And I'm like, yeah, that's really good information. I'm going to be, I'm going to be like 60 years old at some point, still online trying to find trying to find these machines and i'll be reading this <laughs> i'll be reading whatever the next ryukishi story is still on stream while i'm like 60 years old <laughs> talking about how i'm still trying to get a machine oh god all right i don't even know i don't even know what happened a week ago It was obviously, it was, uh, we, I mean, it, it was just a continuation of, um, the continuation of, uh, it was only a week ago, but I feel like it happened. My brain makes it feel like it was like at least a couple weeks ago. I would say probably just more, I don't remember exact specifics. Maybe when we load up, we will, but, um. Obviously, continuation of uh, Rena. Was it was it a week ago or even longer ago when Rena came to Ketchy's house? I don't even. When did that happen? <laughs> that was like a while ago, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm just remembering some random thought. Uh, but basically, you know, the whole thing, Ketchy reaffirming that. Um, he needs to save Rena, basically, from herself. Save Rena from herself. Uh, I think I was informed that we most likely... That was a week ago? Perfect. See, why does it feel like even longer then? I don't know. So yeah, a week ago, when we last streamed Higurashi. Um, now informed that we probably won't be able to hit the next, like what we call it like yeah nice break in between sections here so we'll probably just have to read until i feel content and we'll just call it a night um and then we'll pick it back up on saturday when we do um and we'll just go from there <sighs> oh yeah okay so a week ago you found a website that sells a Umineko Pachinko machine? Like an actual? Or is it like a jape? Or is it sold out? Or is it or is it a bidding thing? Or is it a... These are all the questions that I have. feel like I shouldn't be cooking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've... Yeah, I've run into this. Um, it's currently obviously sold out. But, yes, this is the type of stuff I was looking at. Um, so, yeah, you basically just found a listing for it, which is fine. Um, I guess for uh, VOD watchers, um, it's a link to, basically, 
because I, I don't, I forget if there's multiple, there probably is multiple, or maybe, I don't know. I, I know of at least one Umineko um, Pachinko machine. Um, and this one is a listing for a thousand, a thousand plus, and then it's uh, plus 400 for shipping. If you're just curious about the actual cost of what it would actually cost to like get a hold of one of these, potentially. This is just some random Pachinko um, site, you know, but yeah, sold out, unfortunately. Um, if you want, what is this? Let me see this. Also, yeah, I was just now looking at this. This isn't, um, these are slightly different. This is, um, they're not pachinko machines. They're, what are they called? They're called, um, something else. But these are just, like, slots. Um, so if you, like, I don't know if you're still on that page, but basically, um, they're obviously different. The thing is, it would be, uh... It'd be different. Uh, obviously, I would rather have a full-on pachinko machine. Because I, I know a pachinko machine is kind of like... A glorified uh, like slot machine thing. But these are close. This is close. Um, I assume... Now we've got, we got... I'm looking. Let me see this. Yeah, these are... Sorry, I'm just looking at things. Yeah, these are a lot more of just like, I forget if there's a specific term for them, but these are just more like slot machine stuff. So potentially even more expensive if we're talking about, but close, closer, <laughs> closer to what I'm looking for, for sure. Anyway, I'll continue my research into trying to get one. It's gonna be, like I said, it's unfortunately, it's gonna be much harder than just, um, just being like typing and being like i i want this like even if i was willing to part with a lot of money pay a premium or whatever um they're not just always available and they're not like uh as easy as just like generally unfortunately a lot of unfortunates into acquiring one but one day just keep the dream alive for me i just need I just need everyone to be like, hey, give me their energy. <laughs> or the thing is, I, I, I think I made this joke when we were doing Umineko. But on the off chance that, like I said, if there's anyone listening at some point where they're like, for some reason, they've got like, they know of a machine out there for me to somehow buy or purchase or get a hold of i you know it's worth at least trying i should say that you know at least <laughs> at least but uh yeah other than that i think i talked about this last couple of days but other than that other than machinko stuff um it was a fun weekend or a fun a day i was i was basically up and on my feet and walking around for like 16 hours and nothing makes you feel old than like doing that and you're just like ooh, just walking around everywhere at a convention just up up and about I'm not as young as i used to be all right actually i do so somewhat remember what was happening on tuesday but i don't remember exactly what was on the screen i remember i was I was tearing up. I was having like both a slight allergic reaction and also very upset at what was happening on the screen. So if I can't remember actually what's happening in the story, at least I can remember what I, what's happening to my physical body. I know my emotional state as I'm reading these. So I guess that's one thing. Uh, all right, let's get into reading mode here. 
30 minutes in. Walking with only me on to school made me miss Rina a lot. She says, it's nice music going on. Uh, what's wrong, Ki-chan? Why are you looking around? Oh? What? Oh, nothing. It was the same old path to school, but I felt nervous for some reason. I wonder what Rena meant when she said she was going to win a come from behind victory last night. Okay. So, uh, okay. So that's a little... So yeah, she met him at the house. I guess, yeah, they had that discussion. I forget, did she do something to him at all? I can't remember. Why am I vaguely remembering, like, her doing something to him? Or am I just thinking? Am I just projecting? I don't know. Um, but I do recall... They just talked. Okay. I, okay. So, yeah, I vaguely remember that. At least I remembered she had come to his house late at night. Yes. Okay, cool. Wait, did I read whatever that last sentence was? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. I couldn't stop feeling like something dangerous was going to happen. Reina thought Mion was one of her enemies. She could be lying in wait to, to attack Mion with a knife. Don't worry. Reina isn't going to do something as rash as that. Even if she does, I can protect myself. Damn, Mion. Mion's like, yeah, even if she comes at me. I can hold my own. Mion said, uh, Mion said it brightly as if trying to tell me she wasn't afraid of anything. But I couldn't be optimistic like her because I knew exactly what Rena was going through. Rena must be determined by now. She probably wouldn't mind dying fighting against Mion if she wasn't going to win anyway. Of course, that didn't mean she was definitely going to take violent action. But I couldn't deny the possibility either. <laughs> This old man is more concerned about the reason why Rena went crazy all of a sudden. Was there any reason? I remembered the tragedy. I couldn't remember what made the world go crazy. But I remembered we got lost in that awfully scary world. It started with small things, and the small things continued to pile up one after another. If you thought about it calmly, you'd laugh, because it was really a stupid thing. But once those tiny, uh, once those little tiny stupid things started to bother you, you couldn't ignore them. It was that kind of disease. If you could just call, if you could call it one, but there must have been a reason. There must have been a reason that made the world go crazy. But it must be such a small thing that you couldn't even notice. And unfortunately, the reason was very difficult to understand, and you wouldn't be able to figure it out until you died. <laughs> I have a relative who's a doctor. He said that if you have a tumor in specific parts of your brain, it can change your personality, make you a totally different person. People who suffered from this disease used to be considered haunted by devils or possessed by foxes. People dramatized it like it was something occult. You mean Rina is suffering from a physical disease in her brain? In her case, it might be better to say that it's a mental disease. Rena was upset and mentally unstable because of the murder of Rena and Tepe. At a time like that, the stupid Oishi told her about what happened to Tomotake-san in an exaggerated way. Oh wait! <laughs> I'm a fucking idiot. Was, was a week ago? Was it the whole... It, that must have been the fucking meeting between the police force and uh, I just... It like fucking snapped to me. The the police force and the Sonozaki family with uh, Mion here and her mom. 
and then Oishi realizing, oh fuck, I'm a, uh, I'm I'm embarrassed. Oh jeez, look at me, I'm a fool. I'm a fool of an old man. Okay, that that was that's a pretty important thing. That just like snapped to me that that was that that happened last stream too. Um, okay, that makes a lot more sense, and I know that was a big thing, so that would have taken up a, a bit of time there. Perfect. Alright, so that was the realization part. That was all misunderstanding a mistake. <sighs> okay, we're back. Alright, and it's it took... Alright, I think Oishi-san and Takano-san's scrapbooks have many things in common. <laughs> really? Like what? What? <laughs> Well, he believes in the series of mysterious deaths of Inamazawa, but that's a delusion, isn't it? I mean, something actually did happen for five years in a row. But I think there is no series of murders in the first place. It was true that the mysterious incidents happened five years in a row. But they were saw each solved individually. It was the same as a past you didn't need to talk about. We thought of them as a series of mysterious deaths, which is why we thought something was going to happen this year too. It led us to think that there was a conspiracy, and that the Sonazaki family was behind it. We connect those things to the series of mysterious deaths, but we shouldn't do that in the first place. Just like I tried to keep my distance from Rina when I found out about her dark past. Wasn't everybody trying to keep their distance from the dark past of Inamazawa? Takano-san's scrapbooks are a good example. She dramatized both recent incidents and old cruel history. And she made feasible stories out of them, saying that the Sonozaki family was behind it all. Oishi-san did the same thing, too. He was so convinced that the Sonozaki family was behind it all that it was making him interpret things the wrong way. In that sense, we could say Oishi-san believed in the same delusion as Rina. <laughs> I think the Sonozaki family is partially accountable for that because you guys act like you're behind it every time something happens. In this village, people think it's the doing of the Sonozaki family whenever something strange happens. It's like a magic word that makes everything settle down. It's like those people who say they can explain all phenomena in this world with plasma. Oh? And what's that supposed to mean? Are you saying all this is the Sonozaki family's fault? Exactly. It's all your fault. So, so, I'll call you Plasma Mion from now on. That'll show her. That'll show her. <laughs> that sounds like a wrestler's name. Well, I like professional wrestlers. Cobra Twist Hey, Keychan, do you know what abdominal stretching is? Stop! Uh, I don't want to wrestle with you in this freaking hot weather. No, no, that hurts! Stop! Good morning, Kechi-san. Good morning. Satoko and Rika-chan looked a little sad when they only, when they saw only the two of us. If the three of us came to school together like always, they would have been really happy. Since I didn't do a really good recap, the whole thing that I just remember, just recalled the maybe the big thing from a week ago, was the realization the Sonozaki family and the police force headed by basically Oishi, came together, had a meeting, tensions were a little high or whatever. But they basically determined, hey, 
uh, you know, this is, this needs to stop. This needs to end. We're going to give you guys these scrapbooks. In exchange, you're going to stop. Basically, I think there was some other deal to it. But basically, like, hey, we're the, you guys will not go after... Or it was... The specifics, I think, were something along the lines of... If you guys get... Like, we're going to go after trying to get Rena. If you guys find Rena, do not talk or question her until we're able to get into contact with her. We're, we're going to get a lawyer for her or whatever, whatever is needed. Is that, you know, that way. Um, but it was basically the realization on Oishi's part that he kind of fucked up. Embarrassing. Uh, he probably gave way too much information and, and kind of planted bad seeds in Rena's head amplifying her paranoia uh and that basically that realization that he kind of fucked up that was the big thing if i if i'm to say i think it's kind of cool to be able to see you know Mion and her mom kind of being like this tag team force of like hey now you guys fucked up. Now look at what we have to do to fix this. And yada yada. Like. You know. Or he was fine. As like a character. But I think I'm. And maybe just because we don't know as much about like. Mion and Shion's mom. As much. We haven't seen as much. She hasn't been there as much. And by there I mean in the story. Um, so it was kind of cool to, at that part. To like see her kind of like spearheading a a meeting between the police force the again and the the interesting thing i think there is we know the two those two factions the the police force and then the sonazaki family constantly uh at, and at, at odds with each other right so it was cool to see it was cool to see the police force fucking make their mistake kind of admit their mistake oishi takes another l uh and uh yeah that was that was all cool last week. I like that. <laughs> now, did it take quite a bit for me, my memory, to get to jog that memory? For sure, but nothing, nothing new here. <laughs> That's to be expected. Um. Anyway, but our classmates were as noisy as usual. Nobody seemed to make a big deal about Rena's absence. Chase sensei was going to be here soon, and she'd start mourning homeroom. Everyone was fooling around as if they didn't want to miss a second of the time until then. Hey! Hey! Something stinks today! Close the windows! Silly. It'll be hotter in here if we do that. It smelled like gasoline or something, and it really stank. Someone from the forestry service must have been putting gasoline in construction equipment or something. Or something much worse is happening. Something much worse is a brewing. Some students near the windows were making a fuss because they wanted to close the windows to shut out the smell. Our school wasn't a normal school compared to others. We were using a part of the forestry service building. Unusual things like this happen sometimes. <laughs> This is nothing. This is nothing. I remember they once brought a few big piles of juniper branches. That was awful. It had this distinct irritating odor that gave us all headaches. What's a juniper? Me. <laughs> Me. That's the name of a vegetable. We sometimes put it in a curry. <laughs> you should look for it next time you go grocery shopping. Huh? Huh? I know little about vegetables, but it sounds like it would be better to make Rika and Ketchi san to taste it first just in case. What? 
Our ball is missing. You hit it again, didn't you, Hojo? The boys seemed to be looking for their ball for a while, and they yelled at Satoko. Why would I hide such a stupid thing? If I was going to hide anything, I'd hide something better than that. Hey, Chie Sensei's coming. Everybody, take a seat. Hello, everyone. Get to your seats. Get to your seats. I kept thinking about Rina the whole time during class. I thought about what she said last night. I wonder what her come from behind victory means. According to Takano-san's delusion, the masterminds behind the bioterrorism were the three families and a group of fanatical believers that controlled those three. In other words, the Sonozaki family. What could Rina do alone against them? Mion lived with her grandmother, the leader of the Sonozaki family. There were only two of them in the house. It was possible that Rina would try to break into the house with a knife, but I'd already come up with that possibility last night. That's why I called Mion and warned her. On the way to school this morning, Mion told me some bodyguards from the uh, court had been at her house since this morning. She told me she'd be guarded herself, too. There was a black car parked near the school gate. They must have been the bodyguards. I think it was mentioned that, like, you know, I think it was even earlier, even tonight, but also I think in previous dreams were like, Mion, or not Mion, uh, Rena, even though she knows she'd probably be fight, go, like, fighting into a losing position, she'd be willing to, like, try, because she's going to try no matter what kind of thing. But damn, if it was, like, a one on one fight between Mion and Rena easy money on Mion. And I know by saying that, I'm going to jinx the situation if that occurs, but like Mion, person who has been trained and has taken like, apparently like classes on how to fight trained in the Texas deserts or whatever the fuck they were saying. <laughs> but also like, head of a family uh, a criminal kind of like, leaning organization family uh, older or maybe slightly, uh, you know, so many things working in Mion's favor if they came down to Rena trying to attack Mion. You know what I mean? Easy money. <laughs> Cut to like an hour from now and the, the event actually happened and like Rena gets her by just sneaking or something. She stealth kills Mion. <sighs> Let's hope that's not the case. Let's hope everyone just calms down. Rena, <laughs> her bloodlust uh, dies down and dissipates, and everyone's cooler heads prevail, and no one has to die. That's what we're always hoping for. Anyway, there was a black car parked near the school gate. They must have been the bodyguards. But... According to Takano's parasite theory, the battle wouldn't end just by attacking the leader of the Sonozaki family. According to the delusion she believes in, the condition of her victory were more complicated than that. She needed to expose the group of fanatics who are behind the Sonozaki family, and she needed to destroy their research on the parasite. Plus, Rinda didn't have much time left thanks to that suspicious poison she mentioned. But how exactly could she win a comfort behind victory under circumstances like that? She might interpret that the town council are the group of fanatics. If so, she might attack them the next time they're having a meeting at the shrine. The town council meets once a month at most. It'd be hard to believe that they were holding a meeting today. She probably thought the place researching the parasite is the Irie Clinic. Rina suspected that there was something fishy about the clinic from the beginning, and that suspicion must have changed to certainty in her head by now. Did that means she was going to attack the clinic? This wasn't like an action movie. What could she do all by herself? Was she going to start fire? No, that would be pointless. In order to expose the conspiracy, she'd have to get proof that they were actually studying the parasite. Was she going to break into the clinic and get questionable weird samples? <laughs> the last problem of all was how much time she had left. If she believed she didn't have much time left, especially under desperate, disadvantageous conditions, she might try to stab whoever she thought of as an enemy. But Rena sounded like she really believed she would regain her happy and peaceful days after everything was over. 
Rena probably meant she was going to stay alive and win. Was there something like an antidote? It didn't have to be real. As long as it was an antidote to Rena's delusion, it didn't matter what it was. It could even be the water you washed your vegetables with. But if she thought she could get the antidote so easily, she wouldn't have been so desperate about the time she has, uh, she has left. The antidote must be difficult for her to get. The easiest place for that, in her delusion, was that it was hidden somewhere in the clinic. Putting it all together like that, I felt like Eerie and his clinic were in danger. Now that I thought about it, the elderly people in the village, including the members of the town council, hung out in the waiting room of the clinic all the time. If most of the board members happened to gather there, for her, it'd be the perfect place to attack. I told Mion about that during lunch break. <laughs> If this were a normal situation, I'd say she wouldn't do such a stupid thing, but... I can't actually deny the possibility. I'm going to call my house. I'll make sure that they send some people to the clinic. Nyan didn't object to my crazy idea. She put down her chopsticks and went to the teacher's office to make a phone call. It sounds so dangerous. I can hardly believe Rena san is going to do such a scary thing. Are you sure she's going to attack the clinic? Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. But if that happens, we're screwed. We need to prevent that disaster from happening. I hope nothing happens at all. Oh my, this is how it. <laughs> wait, 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 okay. So, uh, I did not know this is how it's going to present it. Okay, so if you recall, I had always wanted the, um, I wanted to always see the alternate paths. The, uh, what they were d d d calling the console, uh, alternate endings or paths or whatever. And then it was someone's like, hey, if you go the bad end paths... Then it's gonna bog down, slow down you the good read the good path reading, and also potentially spoil things that happen in the good path. That is what was told to me. So then I said, "All right, fine, compromise. I will pick the good path, and we'll do the bad paths afterwards." And I thought that was a, a worthy compromise. So at this, so unlike previous chapters where I didn't know what was the correct answer or not, I specifically went with the option of it highlighting which is the good choice. <laughs> and I'm going to assume <laughs> that that's what these the check mark and X is for. <laughs> this is not how I expect. For some reason, I thought it was just going to highlight like somehow the correct thing so let me go let's go ahead and be wise about this i'll start on just the second page here and i'll say it'll be all right but then once we finish everything we can come back and see what happens when i say yeah i guess which <laughs> bless this game bless these choices these <laughs> Like, what is the difference? I mean, obviously I know the difference, but it isn't like, you know, like in a choose your own adventure thing where you actually have choices and you make like one of two choices and they're very different choices. And then you're like, okay, I could see how one thing's going to go one way. This is like the difference between a couple words. It's just very funny to me. This is just how this is presented. Yeah, it's not like, all right, I'm going to physically confront Rena or I'm going to let Rena go and do whatever she must do. Like, it's not even like that. It's like, <laughs> it'll be all right. Or yeah, I guess. 
I'm gonna say maybe you're supposed to know. Yeah, I guess is bad because it's got the the ellipses at the front, and it's 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 showing indecisiveness and unsureness. And in life, you need to be a hundred percent confident in everything you do all the time. It'll be all right. So what did I even say? So, so I said. Maybe she will, maybe she won't. But if that happens, we're screwed. We need to prevent that disaster from happening. Rika says, I hope nothing happens at all. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Okay, well, that's certainly one, you know, that's very funny. It's, I, I'm not even hating. I just find it very funny. But we'll, we'll see what happens at the end. What happens when you click that. So put a, put a pin in that right now. Uh, Kasai here says, okay. I'll send two of our subordinates to the clinic. I don't think she'll do it. But you'll never know what's going to happen. Can we capture her by force if she does? Honestly, I don't want to do that. What do you think we should do? We made an agreement with the cops that we're going to give Rina Ryugu to them right after we find her. So even if we use force to capture her, we won't get in trouble. I'm not worried about losing face. I just feel sorry for Rina. I really want to settle as calmly as possible. Well, she's still young. So as long as she didn't kill someone or something, all she has to do is apologize and everything will be fine. Yeah, uh, a laugh, laugh, laugh at it, Mion, like it's, it, it, that's not a thing. <laughs> well then, she might be out of our hands. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, as long as they don't find out about it, she'll be safe. Safe, safe. She'll definitely be safe. Nobody really cares about the disappearance of those two anyway. People think that they ran away somewhere because they did something wrong. Those things happen all the time. So, she's fine. Don't worry about it. She's out, she's safe. What? Are we playing baseball now? <laughs> Anyways, please just be careful. I gotta say, quite impressive of Mion to still have this. I'd assume it's mostly to try to keep the people around her calm, but she still has this kind of air about her that's very. Everything is okay, everything will find a way to be resolved. Nothing bad will happen. I think that's kind of because she says, like, she doesn't think... She's constantly saying, like, I don't think Arena's gonna do anything. Like, we see, we've seen leading up to even just now. She's like, uh, I don't think Arena has it in her. I don't think she's gonna do anything. She's, like, downplaying it. And it's just very interesting to see her just, you know, calmly, almost kind of carefree-wise, just be like, eh, yeah, we're making... We're cracking jokes. It's all good. <sighs> Will do. So, it's okay to capture her by force, right? Don't make any mistakes. You have to get her. Please don't make it like a chase scene or anything like that. I couldn't help but have a silly chat with Kasai san. And I put the. Oh! Oh, for from Mion's perspective? When I put the phone down, I sensed Chase since it was looking at me. No wonder, as she had been able to hear the conversation clearly in this tiny room. Chase since they put her spoon down, with a sad look on her face, she asked the following. 
今の電話は、リュウグウさんをめぐる話ですか ?Were you talking about リュウグウさんまあ、はい。Uh, yes. そのザキさん、リュウグウさんはどうして家出をしちゃったんでしょうそのザキさん、Do you know why リュウグウさん、uh, ran away from her home? お友達として何か知ってはいませんか You're close, aren't you? It was hard for anyone to understand Rina's situation, except for me and Kichan. So, most of them thought that Rina just ran away from home. But after she did, cops made too much of a fuss over it. Oishi stupidly believed that the scrapbooks were a big scoop, and he overacted in trying to find Rina. He had patrol cars running around everywhere in the village, he even used the town council's phone directory to find her. So, people in the village thought Rina did something wrong and was trying to run away from the cops. What was going to be difficult for me, more than finding her, was to make up a story to retrieve Rena's honor after they detain her. Hmm. What about this? Rena went for a walk, fell down, and hit her head on the edge of some tofu and lost her memory. <laughs> I wish he misunderstood something big time and he thought she was a criminal. It was too easy. Anyway, we did make it clear that Oishi was the one who misunderstood everything at the meeting the other day. I had to make the best use of his name while he was feeling down for once. What I had to do was not to make a big deal about the situation, and to create an environment that allowed Rena to forget everything that happened in order to get her life back together as soon as possible. Everything is going to be fine, Chie Sensei. Rena's a little sick right now, that's all. Also,、uh, we just I noted that we switched now to Mion's perspective, and it's It was minor, it was small there, but it's interesting to see、uh, the inner workings of Mion's brain working,、uh, even if it was somewhat of a joke,、uh, of how to make like a cover story for someone, as we've seen and theorized that she's been doing behind the scenes many times for a bunch of different characters.、Um, you know, like、uh, most notably, probably back when Ketchy was doing the murdering. And then she was like, made up a whole story that then the whole village was then buying into of, oh, he was there at the, the Wanagashi festival. Not murdering people. You know, that whole thing.、Uh, let's see. Mion says, everything is going to be fine, Chie Sensei. Rina's a little sick right now. That's all. So, the old case that's no bull, bitter and caging, a sticky knee can't you guys stay? Hannah's your Yakoshi Kushta da kiddis. Fat cop somehow made a lovely mistake and got things twisted around. Masaka sensei, Rena got a rico to stay to so tune and they sing it. I need this, you know. You don't believe that Rena did something wrong and that she's trying to run from the police, do you? So, they were much on this kiddo. Of course not. Demo, ye de surcotoni otte, go kazokuni o kake stay to mevaco, kangareba, varu kunai to you koto arimase. But making her family worry by running away from home isn't a good thing to do either. She had a fight with her father. She ran away from home for a little while. She acted childish, and that's all. Maybe that'd be the best story to go with.、Uh, I wonder if she had some problems she couldn't talk to anyone about. I must be a bad teacher because I never realized it. A truer sentence has never been spoken. I wish I could have sat down and talked with Ryu san before all this happened. Sensei, just a heavy and can't guys see this. Jay Sensei, you're taking it too seriously. More just to relax, relax. You need to relax. It's normal for young kids nowadays to run away from home for a while. Ryu san got on the mama who don't need to see my thing. What do you got to have to make that all see my show? Oh no! What am I gonna do if Riku san becomes one of those bad kids and starts doing really bad things? <laughs> Alright, Jay. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, you get out of the spotlight here. Well, I'm, 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 do I'm done with you.、Uh, Riku san becomes a bad kid. She does something bad and gets arrested by the police. It's her teacher's responsibility. I'll be dishonorably discharged. I can't eat curry anymore. Oh, this is just silly. I'm dead! <laughs> Chie as a character is just completely unserious. 
Just I need I need this I need that fact to be 100% understood. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Chase Sensei seemed comically upset by her own imagination. It looked funny, so I decided to leave her alone. <laughs> I made to leave the teacher's office to go back to the classroom, but right then the phone rang. Hi, Moshi Moshi. Hello. Hinamizawa Bunko de gozaimasu. This is the Hinamizawa branch school. Chase Sensei had to answer the phone all day today because the principal was on a business trip. I exited to the hallway. Then I heard the tone of her voice change. <laughs> what? Where are you right now? What? I yelled and looked back at her. It was probably Rena. She called the school. I tried to go back inside the teacher's office, but Chase Sensei gestured at, at me to uh, gestured at me not to come in. Chase Sensei acknowledged what Rena was saying several times, and then she looked up at the clock. Okay. I'll be right there. I'm your teacher. You promised me, alright? She said only that, put the phone down, and got her purse out of her locker. Class president. I have an emergency to take care of. I'm going out for a while, so please have everybody study by themselves while I'm gone. She took her car key out from her purse. It was obvious that she was going to see Rina somewhere. Chie-sensei, was it Rina? That's all. You're in charge of the class, okay? <sighs> why couldn't... Oh, I don't want this to become a big misunderstanding. Why couldn't... Why couldn't the teacher just say yes or no? Because <sighs> if it's not... It's going to cause problems, potentially. Oh, well. Jay sensei completely ignored me, and she ran out into the hallway. She ran into the schoolyard and got into her car. The moment her car left through the gate, I ran out to the schoolyard myself. I headed for the black car parked near the gate and knocked on the window. How are you doing, lady? Everything is quiet so far. Uh, I know. But I need you to follow that car just that just left. I think she's going to meet Rina. Lucas! Oh boy, we got high action happening. Uh, understood. Rena is very paranoid, so you need to be careful. Bring her to my house right after you catch her. After that, follow Kasai's orders. She's my friend. You better not get her hurt. Rena must have told Chie Sensei that she wanted to talk to her alone. I could tell that easily from the way she ignored my question. I did feel a little bad for ruining their promise, but it was very important that we caught her before she did something wrong. We could still make up an excuse that she was just wandering around because she had a fight with her father and ran away from home. But if she set fire to the clinic or something, there would be nothing I could do. The car made a rough U-turn on the gravel road and it chased after Chie Sensei's car at full speed. I watched the car until it was gone. All I could do now was to pray that this would be settled calmly. Uh, hey, pay attention, everyone! Well, we need to study by ourselves for the rest of the class today. So get back to your desks and study quietly. Self studying? Mion ran up to me and spoke quietly. Rena just called. What? Really? Yeah, she just called the teacher's office. I think Chie Sensei went to meet with Rina. Rina, I wonder what she's going to do. I have no idea. Anyway, I told my bodyguards to follow Chie Sensei's car. I feel bad for Rena, but we're going to capture her by the, uh, capture her there by force. Hope it works. They're used to doing this kind of stuff. I'm sure they'll do uh I'm sure they'll do fine. 
So, if they catch her, is everything going to be over? Yeah. We'll send her to a hospital. If a doctor sees her, I'm sure he'll find a typical kind of disease, a disease or something. It'll be like obsessive psychosomatic disorder or whatever. <sighs> While we were spending our afternoon studying peacefully, the members of the Sonozaki family would capture Rina, who was waiting for Chie Sensei somewhere. The problem would be solved. It wasn't going to be easy after that, but I was sure Mion would take good care of her. And in the end, everybody would understand that Rina just ran away from home because of a silly fight with her father. A happy ending. <sighs> Problem solved, right? Mion winked at me. She looked like she already thought everything was over. But that just didn't sound right to me. I couldn't see any connection between Rina and Chie Sensei. It was hard to explain, but there was something wrong. I wasn't saying that they didn't get along. Rina was a good student, so Chie Sensei had a good relationship with her. But I just didn't understand what Rina wanted from Chie Sensei. While I was thinking about it, the door opened, and one of our classmates came back from the bathroom. Whoa! 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 Hey! Hey! Whoa! Hey! Hey! Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Holy shit, that just happened out of nowhere. With Rena in a fighting stance. Whoa. While I was uh, thinking about it, the door opened and one of our classmates came back from the bathroom with Rena. What the fuck? What? Rena! Rena! Everybody, stand up. Oh my god, is she gonna like take the classroom by hostage? I'm scared. Oh man, what if it was Rena on the phone, but it was like a diversion tactic? Oh, that would be so smart of her. Oh shit, did I miss- Did I- Did I, uh- Did I, uh, underestimate Rena? Oh man. Oh, this is scary. Move to the center of the room. Everyone gasped in surprise. Even Chase since they couldn't make everybody go so quiet all of a sudden. Rena was gripping the shoulder of the student who came back from the bathroom. In her other hand, she had a big scary looking hatchet. It was the same one she had the other night. Everyone immediately understood that Rena had taken a hostage. Are you all deaf? Move to the center of the room. Push the desk to the sides. Nobody grasped what she was asking us to do. We all froze. Rina was the only one who was smiling. It was terrifying. Mi-chan. You're the class president. Tell everyone to move to the center. Rena! Rena, what are you doing? Bam! Oh, the backhanded or something. A loud noise washed out Mion's voice. Rena hit the teacher's desk really hard with her hatchet. She pulled out the hatchet, making an ominous ripping noise. There was now a line of violence carved plainly into the desk. Uh oh. She broke it. Chase Sensei is going to get mad when she comes back. Well, that's certainly something that might happen. No, that wasn't it. What? The hell. I knew I couldn't trust you, Mi-chan. I'm going to ask Keiichi-kun then. You're my only friend, right, Keiichi-kun? So, I can trust you, can't I? Rina, your eyes. You look so scary. I've never seen eyes like that in my life. Your eyes are full of insanity. Why are people afraid of insanity? Insanity means that a person doesn't share the same values and the same common sense as us. For example, say a thief breaks into the house and he ties you up. You'll get scared and wonder if he's going to stab you before he leaves. But you hope that the thief has feelings too and that he's not going to kill you for no reason. 
No matter how bad the person is, we tend to believe in his goodwill as long as we share the same values, same common sense, and the same morals as him. But we can't expect goodwill from somebody who doesn't have those things. We can't expect goodwill from a person who can't communicate with us. When a burglar has a knife and you beg him not to hurt you, you expect him to listen to you and show you mercy. In other words, you can still communicate with him. But if he doesn't have the ability to communicate, he's just like a monster that's trying to attack you. Or like the blade of a guillotine that's falling down on you. You fear him because you can't communicate with him. That's insanity. It was the same fear we were feeling towards Rena at that very moment. She looked like a human just like us. There's no room for her to communicate with us like a normal person could do. Everybody understood that fear instinctively. Kechikun. Make them move the desk to make room in the middle. Uh, okay. Everybody, uh, let's do as Rena says. Rena was like a barrel of gunpowder at that moment. She seemed really calm and quiet, but she could explode any minute. When she did, I doubt she'd show us any mercy. She probably wouldn't hesitate to use that hatchet on us. That's right. Just like how I didn't feel guilty or hesitate to kill Rena and Mion. Everybody went all quiet while pushing the desk against the wall to make a space where Rena wanted it. Rena, saying that we're moving too slow, hit the blackboard with the hatchet, making a horrible noise. Every time she did that, she left an equally horrible scar on the blackboard, the thing that we looked at most in the school. Kechikun! Can you get the jump ropes out from the lockers? Use them to tie our classmates up. Uh, I'm not good at tying knots. I probably can't tie them up very well. I'll check one by one if you tie them up well enough. If I find the ropes loose, I'll kill the person, so you better tie them up really well. <laughs> we were still kids. We saw the word kill all the time. It was used in a lot of comic books and cartoons, after all. So, normally you'd assume we'd just be hearing it- We'd be used to hearing the word kill. But, when Rena said she'd kill us, it sounded so frightening. I never heard something like that before in my life. To Rena, our lives were like cards she could use for negotiation. She'd get rid of one card every time somebody refused her request. Get rid of? Damn it. Why did we use such scary words like get rid of for simple things like playing cards? Anyway, there were about 20 students in the class. That was a little bit too many for Rena to handle. She might get rid of one or two just to set an example. I decided to do what Rena said because I didn't want her to lose her temper. I got out everybody's jump ropes from their lockers. All of you, get on the floor. Keshikun, you can start tying their hands behind their backs. Tie them really tightly. You're on my side, aren't you? You wouldn't tie them loosely on purpose. Would you? <laughs> Mion tried to make eye contact with me. If everybody was tied down, we wouldn't be able to stop her from occupying the school. There were more than 20 students in this class. Half of them were boys, but most of them were smaller than Rena. But there were enough people here to overpower her. But if we did that, Rena would probably hit her hostage with the hatchet. And she used the hatchet to attack the rest of us without hesitation. It'd be a bloody battle. I'm sure somebody would get hurt if we tried to overpower her. The hostage would be seriously injured. Or maybe even die. If that happened, it was over. No matter how hard we tried to cover up, she'd be able to. She'd never be able to live peacefully like before. Mion seemed to understand that too. I could tell from Rena's eyes that she wasn't going to be go easy on us. If somebody showed defiance, she'd break the hostage's head open immediately. Of course, Rena had done that before. She'd probably do it again with no hesitation. But, 
As long as you did what she said, we could prevent that bloody tragedy. If we could somehow solve the situation without shedding any blood, with Mion's influence, we might still be able to pretend that this never happened. At the least, we had to make sure she didn't kill anyone. Stagao. Let's do as Rina says. Kei-chan. Kei-chan. Mion tried to think of ways to overpower Rina, but she couldn't come up with any good ideas to save the hostage. That's how easy it would be for Rina to kill them. The best thing to do at that time was to wait for a chance without agitating her further. Mion laid down on the floor, and everyone else followed suit, sluggish with terror. And I was left alone, standing rooted to the spot with jump ropes in my hands. All my classmates were lying face down on the floor, while Rina was paint pointing the hatchet at the hostage, watching our every move out uh, from behind the teacher's desk. I just stood frozen in the middle of it all. It's times like these. Now, we try to think. Why did the teacher leave? And it better at this point be a very good point. A uh, reason. It better not. It better have been like Rena somehow. A diversion tactic. Because if it was something stupid. Like she was just told like. Oh, there's some limited edition curry somewhere. And then she just left and then this happened. Under what should have been her supervision. Irredeemable at that point. Uh, anyway, Rina says, Ketchikun, there are many things I want you to help me with. So hurry up. If you take too long, some of them might have to die. Some of the little kids started crying when they heard the word die. It's alright, everyone. Ketchikun will save you. So nobody is going to die. <laughs> Great. Great. Damn it. What a bold threat. She said I was her friend, but she was just playing with the meaning of the word. I was the last person who could still fight against Rena under these circumstances. But it wasn't going to be easy to overpower her by herself. Her overpower her by myself. I wasn't sure if I could do that. Even though I tried to act tough, once Rena pointed the hatchet at somebody's neck, it was over. I shouldn't fight against her for now. I should just wait for a chance. As long as Rena was alone, there'd be a chance. She made me tie them up because she couldn't do that by herself. There was a limit to what she could do because she was by herself. If we could cover this up somehow before Chie Sensei came back, we'd still be able to pretend like we were kidding around. I finally realized something. I realized why Rena called Chie Sensei to meet with her. In order for Rina to take over the classroom, she needed to get rid of Chie Sensei. Chie Sensei had a very strong sense of justice. Even if Rina had a gun, she wouldn't hesitate to overpower her. She was the kind of teacher who would risk her life for her students. Look at this game trying to build up Chie as a as a, a bastion of of justice. As a good person. Well I, I know better. <laughs> Rina needed to figure out how to get rid of Chie Sensei. That was the key to her plan. Rina probably thought about attacking her from behind at first, but there was a risk there, as Chia Sensei was a grown-up woman, so she probably thought that attacking her directly wasn't a wise choice. So, naturally, the next option was to lure her out somewhere. Rina called Chia Sensei and told her she wanted to talk to her in private, in order to lure her out to some place far from here. Most people, including Chia Sensei, thought Rina was just running away from home, so Chia Sensei must have thought Rina had some problems she wanted to talk to her about. It was too easy to deceive her. Where did she make the phone call from? She probably used the phone in the school. Well, not in school to be exact. She probably used the phone on the second floor of the school, the one belonging to the forestry service. The school was using part of the forestry service building, but this particular location was more of a branch office. So it's not like somebody was here all the time. Rena knew that, and she was probably been hiding there for a while. She called the phone on the first floor from the second floor, she made Chie Sensei leave the school. I didn't think it was a coincidence that the principal was on a business trip today. She probably snuck into the school yesterday. 
She saw the principal's schedule, learned how to call the phone on the first floor from the second, and carried out her plan. She planned it perfectly. Yeah, I knew it. Rena was insane, but I knew she was actually really calm. She was possessed by her delusion, but she was also unbelievably calm about it. So, she could still think fast. I knew that very well because I'd been through the same thing before. What was worse is that Mion's bodyguards were gone. Mion told them to follow Chie Sensei because she thought Chie Sensei was going to meet with Rina. Damn it. Everything seemed to be working out in her favor. I'm done. I tied up the last person and I looked in Rina's direction. If I didn't tie them up t uh, really tightly, Rina would kill them. But when I tried them to, when I, but when I tied them too tightly, they suffered in pain. Their pained cries made me feel useless. Thank you, Keishikun. Keishikun wo utaguri wa shinai kedo. Ichi o zei wo shiraberu ne. I don't mean to doubt you, Keishikun, but I'll make sure just in case. I did not think when I sat down for a stream tonight, I did not think we were going to be in Rena hostage situation type thing at all. I did not think this is how we were this was going to go at all. It's bizarre, not bizarre. It's, it's crazy. It's insane. She's insane. Keishikun wa Please put your hands on your head and lie face down on the floor. And I'm saying this to everybody. If you stand up without my permission, I'll kill you. I'll kill whoever stood up and one more person randomly to set an example. It's not nice to be chosen randomly, huh? Oh, there's a good idea. I'll kill the person who didn't listen to me, add 10 to his or her student number, and kill that person too. For example, let's say Akamura-kun didn't listen to me. I'd kill him and Watanabe-kun Because his student number is 11 Get it? It's like weird rules to like a penalty death game Goes from 0 to 100 real quick Yeah, and I, god, fucking I called it too Because like, I was saying like it's It seemed so weird That Mion's just like Ah, oh, I don't think we have to worry about Rina She's not gonna do anything And then like literally a couple minutes later It's like, we're here Oh boy. I'll always be killing two of you at the same time. You better remember that you involve another person's life besides your own when you attempt to stand against me. How awful. She totally understood how to threaten people. Normally, you stand against an attacker at your own risk. If you fail, you're going to die. But if you're responsible for someone else, then you couldn't try to resist. You can't risk somebody's life with your own decisions. Okay, everybody's tied up nice and tight. You said you aren't good at tying knots, but you did very well, Keichikun. You should be proud of yourself. Well, you can stand up now. It was too late to fight back. I followed her orders. I just had to wait for a chance. We could still turn this into some kind of a bad joke. I had to. I had to do something. Anyway, what were you planning to do, Rina? Don't tell me this is the come from behind victory you were talking about. Okinomiya PS to all vehicles. Okinomiya PS to all vehicles. A hostage situation has broken out at the Hinamazawa Forestry Service Building. There are reportedly multiple hostages. All vehicles are to head to the Forestry Service Building immediately. 
Help them! Kumachan! Kumachan! Sorry I'm late. What's going on? Hello, sir. Today around 1 p.m., the Hinamizawa Branch School's classroom was taken over. All 25 students have been taken hostage. The suspect's initial demands are to prohibit all entry to the branch school's property and to secure a hotline to us. So, they're willing to negotiate with us from the start. What's going on? Also, the suspect is asking for you. Also, the suspect is asking for you, Oishi-san. It's Rina Ryugu. Ryugu-san? Very well. We seem to be... <laughs> we seem to be inseparable, huh? I'll be dealing with her until the end. Oh, she gave a crooked smile. We don't know if she has any accomplices. Curtains are closed, so we can't confirm the situation. Have you asked whoever told us about this? Yeah. No. Rina Ryugu declared it herself. Therefore, don't know what's going on inside. The suspect is asking for the teacher to be called to the police. Their teacher received a call from Rina Ryugu as she left the classroom before the incident took place. This has been well planned, huh? I know it's now a bit that it feels like I'm shitting on the teacher. Quite a bit. But I think there's gotta be some, like, responsibility. And also, like, punishment. Like, the teacher... I mean, I yes, that she wouldn't... She, her and anyone above her would probably not know that Rena was going to do a hostage-type situation to the rest of the classroom. But there's got to be something where it's just like... You can't just... You can't just leave kids. God. Uh, different times, maybe. Different society. Different kind of things going on. But, like... D d simpler, simpler village school system but like and I, i'm not trying to <laughs> i'm definitely not trying to hold like our what our current but could you imagine like man do you know how, how many heads would would roll if like in moderate in like our current time here in the states where things like this things suck about a lot of things you can imagine like a teacher gets a call and then like is able to just leave the classroom and then imagine there it's like a it would have to be like a one class classroom thing so obviously other teachers would be around and stuff but like just uh, the teacher just leaving saying the 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 class president or whatever can <laughs> have them do independent studies and then just someone with a weapon like <laughs> comes in and just can hold the whole classroom hostage. Terrible. God. God, this teacher sucks. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Uh, Oishi says, this has been well planned, huh? Has anyone from the forestry service been taken hostage? Nobody from the service was there today. All 25 hostages are students. The number matches with the attendance the teacher took this morning. Plus the suspect, right? Have you seen anyone else suspicious other than Rina Ryuku? Yeah. No. We've seen someone peeking out from behind the curtain. 
but it was a suspect herself. I mean, what would you do if you were in her place and Rena called you? Not leave the classroom because I'm the teacher and I'm responsible for all the kids in the classroom. At that point, you either do one of two things. You already know the Sonazaki family is very interested in securing Rena, so then you let, you don't, like, the teacher made a very obvious choice there of not letting Mion know that it was Rena. So the teacher was choosing to try to withhold that information, probably because she knew that she told Mion that then the Sonazaki family would go after her. And it was already also said that the teacher, Chie, was feeling guilty. She was like self-guilty for potentially the Rena situation because she didn't understand the complexities of everything. So this was Chie, the teacher, taking it upon herself to try to fix the situation that she couldn't fix because it's not her problem or anything. And she left the teach the, the classroom. Like, I'm not, I'm not willing to accept this. Or the other thing is she alerts the author like actual authorities like the police force here you know what i mean like again in the teacher spot in that situation you don't just leave the class you don't just leave a bunch of kids to fend for themselves in any situation we all the, the, she's just always just out she's just never she sucks dude she sucks so bad <laughs> Everything else is falling around the, the, this this village. Everything is collapsing. Things shattering. Relationships ending. Straining. Tensions rising. And then you have the teacher, in my opinion. Unforced error. Leaving the kids. Like, I'm going to tell you right now. When all this is said and done. Let's say, let's assume... Let's assume Rena doesn't actually kill anyone here, and they apprehend her and whatever. When all is reviewed about the thing, do you think the teacher gets out scotch-free? No. Someone at the very least slaps her on the wrist and says, in, a, in situations like this, you would not just leave a classroom of kids like this. Sure, it's a freak accident that then it was a trick to let Rena or whatever like for Rena to come sneak into the classroom and with the hostage or whatever but like uh, you're responsible for all the kids so constantly that's part of the job it's part of the job description as a teacher well some story bits can't happen if the teacher's always here uh, <laughs> Self-study class is pretty common in Japan. Maybe, maybe I, I, I will. That's maybe the one thing I'll give. I'm coming from a very American, you know, where shit happens pretty regularly. Uh, and part of the job description as a teacher is you're not only teaching the kids, but also you're paid to watch the kids and kind of make sure for their well-being and they're your responsibility that the, the ki parents give the kids up to the school and the school in turn says we have appointed teachers that will watch over your kids and at the best of their ability try to make sure nothing happens to the kids in that room in the school and in that in my opinion the teacher failed there because she abandoned the rest of the kids to try to go fix one kid thing one kid's situation because she weirdly is feeling guilty about it or whatever or she thinks she can she's the hero of the story she think chie thinks this is the chie story and chapter six is chie underappreciated hero or something and so she was like i mean it's my turn to be the protagonist i'm gonna run out there and go save to save her i can talk some sense into her or whatever when she doesn't know the fucking situation, she's oblivious. And I'm not, I'm not getting off this hill. I'm not changing my mind. I, I'm, I'm defending this position. <laughs> it 
its rural Japan in the 80s. Excuses. You're trying to, you're trying to, I, I see, I see, I see Chad is, uh, is apparently Chie defender. We got a real, a, a real Chie apologist here in chat. Um, I mean, whatever floats your boat, but, uh, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I, I need to voice my, my strong anti-Chie bias here. Anyway, Kumagai says, No, we've seen someone peeking out from behind the curtain, but it was a suspect herself. We're guessing there must be at least one or two more of them, though. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> well. Maybe she really is doing it by herself. Rainerigu was a true believer in Mio Takno scrapbooks. According to the scrapbooks, the entire village is Rainerigu's enemy. She didn't have anyone she can trust. However, Oishi had always believed in Mio Takno's delusion. It was possible that someone who was influenced the same way was following Rina Ryugu. Oishi san, the principal and the teacher are here. Oh, look who it is! Hello, Chie Sensei. Are you okay? Oh, she ran up to Chie Sensei, who was crying with a handkerchief held up to her face. Uh, Rina Chen is a good girl. For her to do something like this, there must be some mistake. <laughs> if I were to do this by the book, I would ask you about Ryugu-san's recent behavior. Also, she says there must be some mistake. Yeah, the mistake is the adults in the story. Most specifically, Oishi and... Takano poisoned her mentally, figuratively. But when it comes to Rigu san, I probably know better than you do. Please, don't worry. I'll take care of this as peacefully as possible. Chie Sensei was huddled over, and Oishi didn't think he could say anything else to her. On the contrary, the principal was staying strong, trying to figure out how to take care of the situation. Oishi dono, yoroshiku otanomishi masu zo. Mr. Oishi, please. Moshi dekiru nara, hitojichi no koukan wo moshi detai. If possible, I would like to request to be a hostage myself. Zehi watashi to kodomo tachi wo koukan shite itadakitai. I will take the place of the children. Kojou Sensei! Uh, let me do that instead. <laughs> it's all my fault. Uh... At least she recognizes it. At least she understands. At least she understands how much I hate her. <laughs> I'm so aggressive. I'm so aggra I'm, so I'm so aggressive today. Uh, Oishi says, please, don't blame yourselves. I have things I want to ask you, so I'd appreciate it if you cooperate. Please show them the blueprints. Excuse me, sir. Section Chief Takasugi is on the radio. Hello. Hello, this is Oishi. Oishi san, how goes things? Kumagai informed me of the situation. The suspect is underage, huh? Please keep strict control of the press. I understand. 
犯人側が私を交渉人に指定してきてるようですが、問題ありませんかね Also, suspect is requesting me as a negotiator. Is that okay with you? You've known Rina Ryuku since the parasite incident from the other day. I bet she still thinks you're her ally. Only you can do the job. Good luck. I really don't want to, but since I caused so much trouble, I guess I'll have to do this to make up for it. Oishi-san! Oishi-san! Irina Ryuku is on the card phone. That was faster than expected. I'll go get it. Thank you. Hello? Oishi. This is Oishi. Oishi san desu ka? Oh, we're from Rina's perspective. Uh, she says, Oishi san? Domo, Ryugu desu. This is Ryugu. Domo, domo. Hello. Oishi desu. This is Oishi. Shasai denwa te denpa to ka ga waruin desu ka? Is the signal weak on your car phone? Tama ni chotto kikoe ni kuku narimasu ne. It's kind of hard to hear. <laughs> Just like me, it's getting old. Oishi and I exchange friendly words. A long, long cord trailed through the hallway from the teacher's office. That cord extended further to the phone or the, uh, on the podium in the classroom. Let's get down to business. I'll check to see if you're qualified to negotiate for me. Okay. Shoot. You are my ally, aren't you, Oishi-san? Of course. Let's expose the conspiracy of the Sonosaki family together, you and me. We should answer without hesitation. Was he still my ally? Or was this sly detective just saying what I wanted to hear? Either way, I only had Oishi to depend on. If I couldn't trust him, I was stuck. There would be nothing else I could do. You didn't believe me for a while either, did you, Kechikun? But you do now, right? Kechikun was sitting on the floor facing away from me, with his head resting in his hands. We're comrades now, huh? Yeah, that's right. Rina Ryugu asked Kechimaibra if he was her comrade, but I couldn't hear his voice. Was she trying to tell me that Kechimaibra was still alive, or that he was being forced to obey her because of the hostages? Maibara-san is your ally too, huh? That's nice. But weren't you suspicious of Maibara-san for a while? Yep. When I heard about the BB gun incident, I couldn't believe it. But we can't let the past fool us. We have to learn from the past in order to grow. <laughs> That's very good. You're absolutely right about that. That was why we forgave each other. So, I don't doubt Kechikun anymore. Kechikun is my comrade. I understand. 
Therefore, Kechikun is my ally too, isn't he? Kechikun, ni watashi ga yoroshiku to itteru to tsutaite kudasai. Please say hello to him for me. Um, hata de itte okimasu ne. Sure, I will. Ah, Kechikun ni mo atarashii nakama to shite go aisatsu ga shitai desu. Actually, I'd like to say hello to him myself. Juaki ni dete murau koto wa dekimasu ka? Can he come to the phone? Conversation stopped suddenly. That made me nervous. Did I say something wrong? Sure. Here he is. Kechikun, Oishi san wants to talk to you. I heard some rattling and rustling on the other side of the phone. Hello? This is Maibara. He sounded monotone. Unable to disobey, Kechi Maibara must have been pretending to follow Rina Ryugu's orders. Hello, Maibara san. This is Oishi from the Okinomiya Police Station. Thank you for coming to the phone. Let's do this together. Yes. Let's do this together. What is Ryugu-san doing right now? She's walking around the classroom. Maibara-san. Maibara-san. Yes, yes. Please say yes if your answer is yes, and yeah if your answer is no. Do you know, do you know what Ryugu-san wants? Yeah. yeah. That answer told me for sure. Kachimaibara wasn't Rina Ryugu's accomplice. There's no way Rina wouldn't tell her accomplice what she wanted after planning a hostage situation like this. How would he help someone who wouldn't even tell him what she wanted? I'll ask you directly. Are you Rina Ryugu's ally? No. Let me change my question. Are you being threatened by Rina Ryugu? Yes. There you go. The other guys in the car listening in on our conversation raised their fists in victory. <laughs> Is Rina Ryugu the only suspect? Yes. If she was the only suspect, then we could respond appropriately. Guess nobody else believed in talking to scrapbooks. If so, my being fooled was even more embarrassing. Womp womp. As I thought about my next question, I heard the phone being taken away from Ketchy. Rina came back on the line. See? Ketchikun is my ally, isn't he? Yes, you are right. That's very promising. Okay, now it's your turn to talk, Oishi-san. How are the simultaneous raids on the Sonazaki family going? Remember? You promised me when we talked on the phone before. Have you found the secret research facility yet? I had to decide on what to say. Should I tell her we conducted raids or not? Maybe she already knew we didn't raid. Maybe she was just testing us. Or testing me. We're trying to come up with a plan for the simultaneous raids as we speak. Talking to the prefectural police as well as the public safety division. We're talking about the entire city, so we need a little more time to prepare for it. You're taking too long! Oishi-san, don't you realize what kind of emergency situation Shishibone City is in right now? What are you doing? Oishi-san, you do believe me, don't you? You're my ally, right? Right? Please answer me! Of course I am. But the police department is a little more complicated than you think. I'm doing my best. I really am. The thing is, this is on a really big scale. Oh.
石さん大石さん私奴らにどこかで毒を盛られました They poisoned me recently 富武さんにあの異常な死に方を強いた原子の力を持った寄生虫 It's the parasites that killed Tomotake san. Are you doko ka de morale tan des? They poison me with them. Kino kara, kayukte kayukte shikata ga nai. I've been itching like crazy since yesterday. Mo atashi, kubi o kaki mushiri sugite, chima mire nan des. I'm all bloody from scratching at my throat. It's sakuran shite no do kaki abutte shima ka mo wakara nai to yu no ni. Oishi san wa nani o mota mota to. I might claw out my throat and die at any moment. You're telling me you're still preparing? I knew it. Oh, she didn't、uh, realize how dire the situation was. He understood there was some kind of a conspiracy in Amazawa, but he didn't realize how soon their plan was going to be executed. Besides, I was already feeling itchy all over my body and was bound to soon die the same way as Tomatake san. I'm really so-、uh, I'm sorry, I really am doing my best. But everybody asks me if I have proof. Shoko? Proof? Shoko ga aleba, sugu ni ugoite kurerun desu ka? Do you need proof? Mio san scrapbooks. Maybe that was what I'd need to convince the police. I was afraid someone would destroy the evidence if I handed them over to Oishi san, so kept them with me. But I didn't have much longer to live. I might not even make it until tomorrow morning. That's right, I might be dead before tomorrow. I would die tonight. Wakarimashita. Okay. Mio san no scrap chow o watashi shimasu. I'll give you Mio san scrapbooks. Sore de doka, hoka no kesat no hito tachi o ikkoku mo hayaku setoku shite kudasai. Please use them to convince the other policemen. Ah, kaskarimasu. Ah, that should help. Sore scrap chow o zehi. Please do give me the scrapbooks. I look through my backpack, which is lying by my feet. Mio san scrapbooks were in there. This is our last resort. Oishi san, do your best. No. You must take care of it, please. Of course. Trust me. I'll expose your conspiracy. I knew the police would take too long to get things moving. They're an organization after all. That's why I'm doing this, to make them understand. You have an excuse now. Please use this chance wisely. Thank you. You can count on me. So, how should we do this? Do you want me to come get it? I knew she wouldn't let me into the classroom. She was still cautious. I could guess where Rina Ryuga was going to make this thing. Was going to take this thing, so I tried to stay ahead of her. I handed a memo with my instructions on it to a colleague. I can't really leave the classroom, so I'll have Ketchuk and deliver them to you. Maybe that's better. If you left the building, something might happen. What do you mean? Well, I'm sure the Sonozaki family already knows about what's going on here. I'm sure they didn't expect you to do something like this, so they might come to shut you up. To shut me up? Do you mean by shooting you? A hitman from the Sonozaki family may try to put a stop to this by sniping you. That's why you shouldn't come outside. Don't even go near the windows. 
I saw you peeking out a window, but you shouldn't do that. They might fire at any time. Wait a minute. Aren't there policemen around? Can't you stop that from happening? We would if we could. But it's so open around here. A well-trained sniper can easily shoot as far as 400 meters. As you know, attack units from the Sonozaki family have gone through military training, and they specialize in assassination techniques. Don't underestimate them. I need you to help me expose the conspiracy of the Sonozaki family. I understand. Thank you for your warning. Even my life is to end tomorrow. I can't die now. That's right. Under no circumstance should you peek out the windows, okay? Be very careful. Phone conversation ended. Rina Ryugu is going to let Kechimaibra deliver the scrapbooks. Did you get what I wrote on the memo already? Okay. Yes, we got it. Do you think it'll work? I scared her, so I don't think she'll peek out the windows. I'm sure she'll still have her eyes open, though. I'll work around it. I roughly understood what was going on from the phone conversation. Okay, Ketchikun. Here are the scrapbooks. Their contents are very important. They're proof of the Sonozaki family's conspiracy, and the police can use them as evidence to conduct a raid. Please take this to Oishi san, okay? And when you give it to him, come right back. I'm watching you. If you do something you're, uh, you aren't supposed to, I'll be angry. Rina took out a couple of old scrapbooks from her backpack and gave them to me. Then, she cast a sidelong glance at Mion. I'll tell you about these later, Mi-chan. I'll tell you all about what a scary conspiracy your family is planning. Or maybe you already know, huh? Anyway, go on, Ketchikun. Just go halfway out into the schoolyard. Don't say anything. You're, you're just delivering the scrapbooks. Don't talk, okay? If you do, if it was Chie Sensei, she'd slap you with a ruler, but. Hmm. What should I use instead? Alright, alright, I won't even say a word. Come on, put the hatchet down. I'm your ally, right? Trust me. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, you're right. I trust you. So please don't betray me, okay? Rina's eyes were telling me clearly. They were telling me she didn't trust me. But even in this state, she also knew she shouldn't sh distrust her friends. Therefore, although she can trust me, she was pretending to. That was why she didn't tie me up. Okay. I'll be going. I'll be right back. Hmm. Okay. 
I walked past my friends, who were lying down on the floor, and headed to the exit. I saw some of their faces as I passed. Some were fearful, some were sure that I'd use the opportunity to run, and some were scared that they'd die if I did. Don't worry guys, I won't let her even touch any of you. If Rina tries to do something, I'll stop her even if I have to risk my own life. Anyway, I did whatever it took to ensure that nobody died. I had to make sure Rena didn't get angry, just wait for the right moment. I went down to the school entrance and changed my shoes, then unlocked the door and stepped outside. I felt the fresh air on my skin. I saw the lights from the police cars. I could feel all the policemen looking at me. As soon as I was in the schoolyard, little boys tried to attempt me. I was free from Rena now. If I ran off the school grounds, I'd be free. What was I thinking? If I did something like that, Rena would go crazy and who knows what else she would do. The important thing here wasn't my safety, it was to make sure that Rena didn't kill anyone. I saw a big man coming towards me from the school gate. That was probably oishi son Are you Kechi Maibara-san? Hello, I'm Oishi from Okinomiya Station. You can call me Kura-chan. Sorry. Rina told me not to talk and to just give these to you. So please, just take them in silence. I understand. These are the scrapbooks, huh? I'll take them. I tried to hand the scrapbooks to Ishisan, but he stepped aside a little. Eh? Confused as to what he was doing, I changed my position and handed them to him again. He took them that time. And at that point, Oishi put something that was under his jacket into my pocket. Don't worry. Even if Ryugu-san was watching, the building is behind you. She couldn't have seen that. Uh, what is this? I couldn't look into my pocket because I didn't want Rina to suspect anything, but whatever it was, it was pretty heavy for its size. I have a memo for you too. On your way back to the classroom, please read it without Ryugu-san noticing. Go on now. She'll get suspicious. I just followed his directions. I was worried Rena had begun to suspect something. When I looked at the classroom, the curtains were closed. But that didn't mean she wasn't peeking out through a crack. I went back to the entrance and locked the door. If Rena checked and found the door unlocked, it would cause more trouble. Rena was in the classroom. There's no way she'd come down this way. She was alone. If she left the classroom, everyone would get up and run. They couldn't run because Rena was there, but they all were all waiting for their chance. The entrance, then, was Rena's blind spot. As I changed my shoes, I quickly removed what Oishi-san had put into my pocket. There was a radio with an earpiece, and something else that looked like a short police baton. There was also a folded piece of paper. I opened the piece of paper and saw a note written in small print. Dear Mybrokun, Please hide the bug in your pocket. It picks up even a low voice, so you can use it to get in touch with me. By using the earphone, you can hear me in return. There's also a spray for self-protection. It sprays as far as one meter. Make sure you aim for the face. Get her in the face! This must be the spray. I guess it's safe to try it here. I held down the button and gas sprayed out from the nozzle. Prepared to Rena's hatchet, this required some caution, but it was small enough to fit in some of my hand. It was reassuring that I could hide it so easily. In other words, it was now possible for me to stop Rena. As I realized all my classmates' fear rested on my shoulders, I felt sweat from my, uh, form on my face. The memo continued. The spray is just for self-defense purposes. Pepper spray only impairs eyesight, and while it makes your enemy powerless due to extreme pain and coughing for at least 30 minutes, it's not powerful enough to render them unconscious. Therefore, please don't forget there is a possibility that your enemy may fight back desperately in panic. The spray is your last resort. Please don't depend on it, but if you need to, make sure to use it. Oishi. 
Was she telling me to use it or not? <laughs> oh no, the instructions are not clear enough. <laughs> Do you want me to spray her or not? <sighs> it was probably one of those grown-up issues. If the cops entrusted me solely with the fate of the hostages and I failed, they'd be held liable. So, while he gave me a weapon, he made it consider its use. I hid the bug in the spray in my pockets and went back to the classroom. I felt a little dizzy, maybe because I was nervous. I was simply following Rena's orders because I had no other choice. That was why I wasn't scared. But things were different from before. I had a weapon. I was in a far better position, but my heart was pounding. Humans are so strange. Shit, what am I going to do? What should I do, Kechimaira? Did I want to fight with Rena? The memo said the spray only reaches as far as one meter. One meter? That was basically a hand-to-hand -hand battle. That meant I only had one opportunity. I didn't have a second chance. The memo also said I need to aim for her face. That wasn't going to be easy. Shit. Besides, Rena was cautious. How could I stand directly in front of her within one meter? But that's what I'd have to do if I was to have any chance of winning. Rena would do anything to reach her goal. She, sh wouldn't, uh, she wouldn't even hesitate to kill. Just like how I didn't. Just like how I didn't. Of course, things are already extremely serious. An apology definitely wouldn't be enough. But at least there hadn't been any casualties. The more time passed, the more irritated Rena would get. She might demand something again. She might kill some of that time to show how serious she was. Bad things had already taken place, but a tragedy hadn't occurred yet. But it was almost here. It wasn't very far at all. When I closed my eyes, I could easily picture Rena killing one classmate after another. After I killed Rena and me, all my room was covered in blood. If she killed 20 people, classroom would be a pool of it. If that happened, Rena would. She still wouldn't realize she was being delusional. She would rip out of her own throat. She would rip out her own throat and die. That would be too big a cross for her to carry. And one day, she would remember and be saddened. She didn't need to go through that. I didn't want Rena to go through what I had to go through. Shit. I felt dizzy. This is a very long hallway. I didn't know the classroom was so far. With each step I took, my determination to fight Rena became stronger. Rena would be shocked to realize I betrayed her. But if she couldn't wake up from the nightmare on her own, someone else would have to wake her up. And her friends need to be the ones to do that. Uh, let me see. Let me think. Uh, how long have we been going? Let me see this. Uh, it's probably a good stopping point now. Hmm. 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 I almost, the way he was talking about it, the way he was presenting, like, oh, do I spray her in the face? Do I, do I act the aggressor? I thought it was actually going to bring up like a like one of those prompts, a prompt to be like, you know, split choice thing. Uh, all right. I mean, it's a little on the short side, but it's fine. We'll do it. We'll call it a night. Um, and then, yeah, Saturday, we'll just we'll just keep going. Saturday, we will just push forth and see what this is. Actually, let me give it get a couple more minutes. Just because, I don't know. Well, we'll see. But I'll see. See, I'm trying to see if it comes to like a. Well, uh, we'll see. Give me like a few more minutes here. Welcome back, Ketchikun. Did Oishi-san say anything? I'm like dead set on trying to see if it gives me like an option to spray her in the face or not. Because then it would be like, oh, that's a good point, point or spot to stop. Did Oishi-san say anything? <laughs> Uh, what is the smell? As soon as I stepped... Uh-oh. As soon as I stepped in the classroom, I smelled something. Alright, you know what? <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Alright, we'll end it. <laughs> Alright, the, the ultimate cliffhanger. What is the smell? Uh, you have now... Uh, uh, me, uh, and uh, the viewing audience has probably about... Uh, four days to sit on this and think about what the smell could possibly be. You know, your mind wanders probably to some of the worst things that it could possibly be. 
But maybe it's just more of that gasoline smell. Maybe someone cooked some fish, some leftover fish in the office microwave, and maybe it smells bad. Uh, maybe someone uh, uh, took a panic shit in the classroom and it smells bad. It could be anything. Don't worry about it. Uh, it, yeah, it's an experimental uh, curry from uh, Chie that's known to have um, very highly smelling like uh, properties. Um, that's that's what it is. No need to question it anymore. Uh. <laughs> Oh, God. All right. I mean, hey, I'm torturing myself here, mostly. I mean, this mostly I, impacts me. I always say, like, probably... I don't know. I don't know what percentage of the audience is reading this the first time with me or if they've, they've experienced this story previously. But um, at the worst, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it the cliffhanger to myself. I'm doing this to myself. So, yeah. Uh, we'll reconvene on the story... Um, Saturday night. We'll do Saturday night Higurashi. Um, it'll be back. We'll see, we'll see what this mysterious smell is. <laughs> God, I, you know, I'm gonna close stream and I'm gonna advance the text just to see what happens. And, uh, you guys will be none the wiser. You won't know I do that. No, I shouldn't even put that out there because I can't have people thinking I would actually do that. Um... So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, God, this sucks for me. Uh, it sucks for me. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll be back with more of this on Saturday. Uh, streams also happening Wednesday and Friday this week. Friday new game is coming out and we'll be doing that Wednesday. Probably checking out more cyberpunk. No stream Thursday. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Have a nice rest of your night. Uh, stay safe, stay well. Uh, and hopefully your uh, nights aren't filled with uh, strange classroom smells. So until tomorrow.